Hi patrons, Neil here with a very special um, review for everyone in, or I guess in the case of everyone, I mean patrons um, mainly. So I haven't done one of these in a while where I've done a movie review just for you, all the patrons. So um, I figure after coming out um, of the theaters of watching Star Wars The Last Jedi last night, I figure I'd do a review and share my initial thoughts. There will be spoilers, of course. So a bit of forewarning there in case you haven't... Um, seen the movie but just my initial thoughts see if it was worth the hype match it up to expectations and all of that good stuff so i'll jump right into it i will start it off with the run tomato score um it's getting a 93 percent with the critics 56 57 percent with the audience so there's a kind of split originally it was a super high i think um after the uh, original screening it was like 100 percent with the critics 93 percent with the audience so there are a couple of bits of points where I probably could have seen a slight dip with the audience, but um, for me, not that big of a dip, so I'll jump right into it. So, um, And then, of course, this being an initial review, my notes aren't in perfect order. These are just notes as I um, thought of them after watching the movie. So um, over the course of the week, I'll try and fine-tune and organize them a bit, but for the most part, we'll, or we'll see how it rolls out for the most part over the course of the week. Um, so to start it off after watching the movie a lot of it felt very familiar my first reaction to it was that it feels like a merging of the storylines with Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi so uh, we have the pivotal scene with um, Rey, Snoke, and Kylo Ren where instead of um, or Kylo Ren making his has made his decision and Snoke doesn't realize that it's a decision to kill him and take over his mantle instead of killing Rey because um in Kylo's vision that we learned about a little bit before he expected Rey to join him at his side so it's kind of that whole uh Return of the Jedi scene at the end with um Vader wanting uh, Luke to join him and the conflict that uh, Luke senses within Vader and even the Emperor senses earlier in the movie turns out to be his undoing so well, we have that coming in here um as far as empire strikes back we have um the first order defeating the uh or a crushing blow for, to the first order or sorry to the resistance um towards the end of the movie so a lot they're down to like 20 people or something like that so or very few people there's or I don't want to even say 20, but there's very few people compared to the original fleet that I had, they had going on. So basically the idea behind Reve Empire Strikes Back, driving them from their base and um, having to uh, run and have to regroup. So there is that. Um, but basically the whole um, idea, and I guess I got a little sidetracked there, but um, we also have Kylo Ren doing what Anakin should have done. Um early on in or towards the end of I guess Revenge of the Sith by kill instead of killing Mace Windu in killing um Palpatine but he kind of does the whole redemption arc in um Return of the Jedi so it's a slight hit or miss here but it's kind of um taking the place of the Dark Lord of the Sith is kind of fulfilling the rule, rule of two so Kylo Ren kind of does that in the film he does take over the first order um although General Hux doesn't quite like it so we'll see how that plays out in episode nine but um kind of that whole story arc so since Kylo Ren doesn't have anything limiting him and stopping him from taking care of or taking Snoke out we get that whole uh game plan uh, my one of my two favorite scenes in the movie was um, or next up my one of my two favorite scenes in the movie was the surprise revelation with uh, Yoda showing up in the movie. So we have um, basically the old man Luke storyline with um, Ray. He's not she, while well, she doesn't understand why he quite left and he's trying to explain it to her as simply as possible. He does have the um, wisdom and understanding that he's noticed over the years that um the jedi while they were trying to promote the good in the universe they ran into the problem of hubris with all of that all the good that they did and they became no better than the sith and then people started to idealize them and make them into more than they were expected to be so 
when that happens it causes more problems for the galaxy than uh, needs to be so and then we have yoda affirming that and um i like the little chat that they have and the callback to empire strikes back with luke still looking to the future and not concentrating on the present and while uh, luke did was hesitant and he was conflicted about destroying the jedi original jedi scrolls and not yoda pulls out the force um lightning or force thunder or whatever and destroys the original temple so there is that um but overall it was a comforting scene it was interesting it was good to see how luke um was coming to the end of his journey and how they tied it in with uh, yoda on a side note i like those creatures that um were rebuilding the temples and maintaining them throughout the years they um they just made they for all all for their part in the movie they just made it um so i enjoyed that the pores were a whole um side thing that were enjoyable and um i liked the inter interactions the most with uh chewy especially on the falcon with them making their nests and getting um in the way and of course it was a very sad scene when um chewy had roasted one of them to eat for dinner and the poros were there was super sad that he had killed one and was wanted to eat one um and of course with the final revelation in the movie being um a complete revelation to me i managed to stay spoiler free until the uh viewing of the movie so i this was a total what wtf uh just happened moment so we have Luke coming at um, at the end of the movie, coming out to help the resistance um, um, fight against the First Order, and we have a or basically he goes in alone against the Walkers and Kylo Ren. But we do see something's off because he's lost weight. He's had the same he has the same look as what we saw in the visions with him and. Um, Kylo Ren is during the time at the um, Jedi Temple and while t training to become a Jedi. So something was a little bit off, but I was like, okay, why would he go in alone? And then I knew something was up when they f the walkers fired on him and he was still alive. So I was thinking, what new power is this? Um, or did he pull like a force jump and escape and then come back before the dust had settled, so to speak, and confuse everybody? But it turns out that uh, Luke um, was still safely away on Octo. And he was using a force apparition or force ghost sort of force power to make it look like he was there and um, fight, do a fake fight against Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren figures it out that he's not something's up and he's not even there to begin with. So the initial thought was that Luke is already dead, but how did that happen? But he's back at the temple. He is actually drained from all of that and he completes the... Um, process to become one with the force so i'm guessing that part of his training included that while he was in isolation on the island and yoda came to finish it because luke finally understands about giving himself up he understands to become a greater part of the cosmic or the force universe the cosmic force versus the living force so um, he is ready to become one with the force so overall that was handled really well it was a complete a total shock and i was like i'm really saddened and i was like i'm kind of bummed that he's uh, no longer going to be tr able to train ray or do anything like that so we'll see how that all plays into episode nine but um luke had gave himself up to keep the first or the resistance alive and keep that spark of or more notably that spark of hope alive um as far as one of the things I was down on the bummer side, as far as not, the one thing I didn't quite like as much was how they handled Ray's parentage when she went into the cave on um, underneath the um, island, which is kind of like the new what was I guess was supposed to be the new um, Dagobah cave, but it while it was interesting to see what. Um, the cave was what this new cave was all about. I kind of felt on one hand that it was kind of confirming what Ray knew already knew about her parents, I guess, but it didn't really reveal anything. So the scene was kind of confusing. So I might have to do a little bit more research on that. So I guess it's going deep within herself and either she believes Kylo Ren that her parents were nobodies or she really doesn't remember who her parents are. So she can't really go trace back to who they are. And there was no way to reveal what was going on there. 
Um, I enjoyed, or one of the other things I enjoyed was a Canto Bite um, sequence with the casino, the um, going in to find the guy with the, or the um, hacker with the red flower lapel, and the introduction to Benicio Del Toro's character. Um, overall, it was good. I liked the sequence with the Faith Ears and um, Rose's explanation and the explanation with... Um, Finn the, and how they came to understand each other more there so overall it was a pretty good sequence I um like the music it kind of fit with the whole thing it was a basically the, um, the Monte Carlo of the Star Wars universe the only downside or, or Kyle probably nitpicking on my part was I kind of expect wanted a uh, cameo with uh, Lando to show up to um, be the actual guy with the flower lapel but Rather than him being an actual hacker, make it Benicio Del Toro's character to close out that and just have that kind of Easter egg in the movie. So um, there was that. It wasn't um, good or it wasn't bad, but I did. I was after watching it, I got to thinking that it might have been fun to see Lando show up here on Monte Carlo. Um, next up, though, I did like the comparing and contrasting with Luke and Ben's relationship during their time, briefly during their time at the Jedi Temple, and um, also the downfall, um, because of Luke's actions and his understanding with it, and then Kylo Ren um, being disappointed in his master, so the conflict isn't necessarily that he, um, about good or bad, it's just, it felt like it was, or it was presented more as a disappointment in his master and luke and luke understanding his failure that leia placed um her trust in luke and he failed his sister so overall it was well done and i liked i don't know if it was meant to be a subtle callback to re, uh, return of the jedi return of the jedi with the rancor fight but the um i do remember it in the novelization where luke understood that in his fight with the rancor that if he understood the rancor to be evil is more of a evil within himself, be, the rancor being uh, mistreated and underfed was just lashing out to get whatever food it wanted. So I think Luke, in his understanding, when he went to um, take down Kylo or Ben, that um, he saw the darkness with himself within himself by doing this, and he stopped himself, but it was too late, and he um, and Ben saw. Um, ben jumped to that conclusion without understanding Luke's own conflict. Uh, one of the other downsides to the movie that was that we didn't really get more of who Snoke was. I guess he's some sort of force user. He has a, a basic version of force lightning or force spark, I guess. And he, but he does have other strong. He is very powerful in the force. He's able to hold Ray down or in place, even though, and she is able to sort of break free, but. Um, he is a powerful force user, so if I was kind of curious if he's an old ancient Sith, or, um, is he someone that rose out after Palpatine, or was he always there, and he has the same, he, or he's been training himself, so, or is he from the Outer Rim, from beyond the Outer Rim, or something, so it's hard to say who he is, but I kind of wanted more backstory, so, but because they took him out, and Kylo Ren is a new Supreme Leader, we'll see how they play that out. Um, and then as far as final questions, neither good nor bad, is that will Ray build, rebuild an order of Force users that live outside of good and evil? So is that kind of the understanding she's going to take away or is she going to rebuild an ideal of the, the ideal of the Jedi outside of their old training, but with the understanding of staying away from the hubris and the um, lifting them up to a point above which they want to be? Or will she retreat and study the ways of the Force some more? But we'll see how they ha how she handles that, and if she understood what late Luke did, especially with their the scene that I did. The other scene that I liked was uh, Luke messing with her with reach out with the Force. She puts her hand out, and he's tickling her hand. So, and then she he slaps her hand. So, um, that that whole scene just make, seeing if she understands what it means to be a force user and that it's not about being a Jedi or a Sith. The light and the dark will always be there. It's what you do to help other people and to ha give people that hope to survive and uh, have a stronger ideal in the galaxy. 
And then what will happen to Princess Leia? So I wasn't expecting that she they were going to have her continue to live through the end of the movie. Although I'm trying to remember in retrospect now that was she uh, did she end up walking out of the cave with the rest of the uh, um actually I think she did walk out of the cave with the rest of the um uh first or the resistance cuz she was on the falcon after the fact. Um Oh yeah, because she was there because she was talking to Ray. But sorry about the outburst. But yeah, it, was, it just hit me. But what's gonna happen her now since Carrie Fisher has passed away? So how are they gonna handle that in Episode Nine, or is it, are they gonna set it further into the future where she's passed away of natural causes in the Star Wars universe? So we'll see how that handles and plays out. But I was kind of surprised that they didn't have her. Um, take the place of Laura Dern's character and um, pilot the ship so they could um, smoothly keep, take so she could have a smooth exit out of the Star Wars franchise in the movies themselves. So overall, it's a good movie. Um, Laura Dern's character, while it was short lived, I kind of wanted uh, more to see if she takes on the mantle of being the leader of the uh, resistance and uh, I'm tre- intrigued to see where uh, Kylo Ren and uh, General Hux's relationship goes now that Snoke has been killed and especially now that General Hux doesn't know that um, it was Kylo Ren who killed Snoke himself. Um, so overall a good movie. I probably give it a 90% grade um, just after the first viewing mostly because of the couple points that kind of um, bugged me. Um, I might even go up to as far as 95%, but I haven't decided on that. The final grade yet, so as I think about it over the coming week, um, I'll have an updated grade by then. But overall, it was worth the hype. I enjoyed it very much. I liked Luke's uh, use of the Force Ghost. I liked his um, interaction with Yoda, and I did like his conversation and uh, meeting up again with R2 and um, his excitement at seeing his old friend and R2 trying to convince him to come back to save the galaxy. I don't know if that... If the hologram with Princess Leia from uh, New Hope, which was another good tie-in, um, changed his mind. But it was nice to see that interaction and their old friendship and um, Luke and R2 having their interactions like old times again. Um, so that's all for this particular review. So I'll, have an up- or I'll work on updating the review a little bit over the rest of the week. And... Um, if you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, or anything like that, it's the usual what um, you can reach out to me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can support the show here on Patreon, patreon.com slash PatelN01. And of course, there's still PayPal, paypal.me slash PatelN01. Of course, all links and all of that good stuff can be found on the website, PatelN01.com. But thanks for tuning in, and until next time.